the girls with their nails done now. Here we are, the no skill plane that is the Hunter F6. You know, you already know what this plane can do. It, it can go straight, it can turn well, and it has amazing missiles. And that's pretty much all you need to know. It's uh, quite a straightforward plane, literally. And some people were saying that this thing is very easy to fly, very brain dead. And to a certain extent, especially in down tiers, that's definitely the case. However, when you get up tiered, especially the 10.0, well, to be honest, it's the only time you'll get up to it when you face Tempanos, say T2s, MiG-19s, even the F4. The F4 can air brake you, and when he's slower than you, he won't overshoot, and he can spray you down. And when he goes too fast, he loses more speed quickly than you. So it's almost impossible to even dogfight an F4 if he's on you. And because he's much faster, it's very hard to not get him on you. So, all in all, you have to play this thing quite cautiously. You don't want to get caught off guard, you don't want to get anyone on you. Although the Hunter, you just get s rammed you have not much of a chance to dodge him. I have dodged two of the s rams before, but, you know, he shot three at me, so it didn't really matter. And it's quite an annoying plane to fly, really, like in a squad, it's very good. It's, it's extremely good, because you can have someone that clears your ass, can have someone that just covers for you, that locks people down so they can go for you in, in the first place. But it becomes a problem when you're on your own. And that's why I'm not squatting in this thing. I'm trying to give you a, a clear picture of how annoying this thing is to, f to fly. Of course, when people don't pay attention to you, when people leave you alone and when you can boom and zoom. I have an example of that later on in this video. This thing becomes extremely potent and you can easily get 4 or 5 kills every game if they leave you alone. But it's hard to be left alone because whenever people see a hunter lately people are kind of scared of them because of the SRAMs. And the SRAMs are extremely powerful especially considering you don't need to be good at aiming. So when you leave one of these alone uh, what will happen is that even someone that's not very good at aiming, someone that doesn't really know how to play this plane he will still be able to get 4 kills if you leave him alone, which is problematic, and I can understand why people want to kill that thing first. But it makes it extremely painful to play. Extremely painful. And But the missiles, as you can see, are a very good meme. And here we are. I got one on me, I got uh, the F5 on me as well. I know he knows me because he was uh, talking to me in the game before this, so I have a feeling that he's not going to break off. So at this point what I'm trying to do is dogfight the, the T2 or defensive fly versus the T2. I don't want him to get on me, but I need some separation. So I'm trying to get like far away as possible from the F5 as I'm defensive flying. But the F5 has an afterburner, so that's not going to happen. Luckily for me, I got a seal to thing B, a friendly, coming in as well. And you can very easily see here that the, the T2 can easily just stay on me. He rolls very well, he pulls pretty well, he has amazing acceleration, but he also loses speed faster than I do. Which makes it so that he can break on my ass. And after he overbreaks and doesn't overshoot, he will just accelerate me and he will just outrun me again. He got hit by a missile, probably an AIM-9E. He looks to be not having much fun with that and he's getting hit a bit more over there. So I'm just going to extend away for now, because that's all you can do in this plane. Of course, look out for missiles, because that T2 really wanted to kill me. The F4 crashes, which is always nice, because the F4 last game was sitting at 13 kilometers trying to run away. So oh, I'm quite happy he crashed. Going for the MiG-17 here, because at this point I think that the, the T2 is dead. See, he got hit by a missile, he got hit a bit more by the CL-13. Make sure that I don't accidentally miss RCL. 
he gets clear, I shoot a missile off and he's dead. And for now I just want to outrun the F-40 or the F-30, I'm not too sure what it is at this point. The F-5 sadly kills our F-100. So now I'm left versus a T-2 that I think is dead. Uh, G91 R3 which isn't much of a problem to fight. The, the F-30 or F-40 which I don't really know what it is at this point. Which is quite annoying in this plane but it's completely doable and I got the F-5. And the F-5, in my opinion, here is my biggest threat. He's the hardest plane to kill. He's maneuverable, he's fast, and he has very good acceleration. He does pretty much everything better than me, except for some top speed and some uh, high speed acceleration, I think. Don't quote me on that. But I do think that I can outlast him in the, the fast game. Because it's still a MiG-17 airframe. So, he presents me his ass. And if there's something you don't want to do in the World well, vs. Hunter, it's presenting your ass. I, at this point, I still haven't fired a single shot with my 30 mils. Lock him up. He's gonna start a turn. Within one kilometer, you fire, and he's dead. That, that's how easy these missiles are. And that makes it great. These missiles make it so that you can actually carry versus planes that you can't outmaneuver. Because you can't airbrake someone. Well, you can, but it's so dangerous to do that th these missiles are very helpful. Pitch up last moment for the T2. He doesn't actually go for me, so it's not a problem. Almost die in the head on there, but luckily uh, he misses. So do I, though. We could have both killed each other right there. I know that the T2 doesn't have missiles anymore. I thought he was dead, so I think he's at least a little bit damaged. So I'm gonna guess on him wanting to R2B zone. As well as that the T2 uses a lot of fuel at the afterburner. And I think he's gonna low run low. Most people don't run 45 minutes of fuel. I'm one of the people that does. Because the afterburner uses so much. I like to play the long game. But a lot of people run 30. Which makes it so that they have what? Like 10, 11 minutes of fuel? Maybe no less. I don't know. It's not, it's not a lot of fuel. It's around 10 minutes. So I know that I will outlast them. And maybe got a fuel leak because he got hit a bit. So I'm not too sure what he's going to do right now. I'm trying to find uh, the G91. The T2 is actually dogfighting me. And I know that he loses a lot more speed than me in the vertical. So that's what I try to do there. I try to stall him out. Try to spiral a little bit. But it looks like he's going to be RTB. Which I can't really blame him for. And for now I just want to find that G91 R3. And the R3 is something you kind of want to use your missiles on. Uh, that thing is very maneuverable. But like looking back at it, I don't know if I would have spared a single missile that I shot. And that's the F4 he actually repaired. So what I want to do right here is use my keyboard so I can keep him in the middle of my screen. Play a little bit and I actually go in. And that's going to be huge. Because the G91 R3 is probably going to fly on 9 minutes of fuel. The T2 will probably run around 10 minutes of fuel with the afterburner. So I think I'm going to be uh, good in a few minutes. They're going to be very low on fuel. But the problem is I don't want that T2 to rearm and repair. So what do we do right now? I'm going to stall out this G91 R3. I'm going to try to see if he's going to pitch up for me. F40 actually dies, which is amazing. Thanks a lot, F100. You won us the game. But the G91 R3 has very little business trying to fight a hunter f6 at high speed and that's the the good thing because his acceleration drops off around 750 maybe with low fuel it's a bit higher like 800 but it doesn't really matter like above 800 is my is my zone and it's the opposite of his zone so if i keep it fast there's very little chance he's actually going to do anything and i still have 528 rounds for two kills which is a lot and the 30 mils, they're aidant. So most of the time when you actually hit something, they're actually going to die. I was trying to get the shot there, but he's actually paying attention. He's rolling around his guns. I'm rolling around my guns. So what I don't want to do is stick on him for too long, bleed all my energy. Because right now, that T2 is going to be repairing. He's going to be landing. And the T2 loses a lot of speed very quickly. It has a parachute. And it takes off extremely quickly as well. So I don't have a lot of time here. And you might call it a bit scummy. And I keep saying it. If you don't want to get strafed, make sure you don't land. And it's pretty much the only advantage I have at this point. Because that T2 is going to be a very big problem for me. He can just run away forever. And the one moment he gets on my 6, 
What can I do? Absolutely nothing. And maybe I could have tried to go for the landing, but the G91R3 is covering me as well, so I can't go land. It's the same thing. If I were to land right here, the G91 would strafe me, and it's my fault. I landed. I still have six minutes of fuel. I don't need to land. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm not going to strafe the T2, because he's probably just going to J out. And he's going to stand on the runway probably anyway. The thing that I want him to do is, to be honest, is either J out or wait. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to keep that T2 grounded. I'm not going to risk getting shot by AA because there's still another guy. And he's probably going to J out the moment I get close because he's not moving and he's still in the plane. So he's obviously paying attention. So I'm just going to dance with the G91R3 right next to the T2. So at doing this, it will prevent the T2 from taking off safely. Of course he can try, but I will just dive on him. And the G91R3 will run out of fuel and he's very close to the base. At the moment I will fly away from the base now. The G91R3 will probably think I can land because I'm flying away. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. This is one massive mind game. But it's something you have to keep in mind. Because people have to keep the fuel loads into account. And the, the amount that most people use. And most people use 30 minutes and most people use 9 minutes on the G91. So I'm just letting them land for now. I'm gonna fly away. I'm gonna wait for the T2 to start rolling. And he is rolling. Lost the G91 for a little bit. T2 is taking off. So what I want to do is bait him up. I'm going almost 1100. That T2 is probably going around 700, he might have a lot more powerful engines than me, but he can spawn 400 kph out of nowhere. So what I want to do is, bring him up. He has full fuel at the moment, so his acceleration, his maneuverability is quite a bit lower compared to mine. Here comes the missile. I would just want to keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, so that the flame disappears, or not the flame, the exhaust disappears from his bore side. A loop over. He's going to try the head on. I'm just going to bank away for a little bit. He's pretty much stalling out, and good night. And now it's just a G91 R3 left. Which is a, a, a problem to fight, but I have 4 minutes. I have a lot of ammo, and I'm not too scared to use it. I'm gonna let him take off. He has uh, quote unquote full fuel right now, so he's a lot less maneuverable than I am. And I have 4 minutes, so his acceleration is lower than normal. And he's less maneuverable than normal at this stage in the game, of course. Which is good. Which is why I'm pressuring him right now. If I were to land, if I were to get an SRAM, yes, I could have gotten an easy kill. But I'd rather do it like this. I'm going 1140. What I'm going to try to do here is put your head on, spray a little bit more than normal. I shot too high. Unfortunate. I go up. He's trying to try to follow for a little bit and bleed even more speed. I'm just going to loop over and I can keep doing this all day. There's no chance. There's no chance for him right here. He can hope for me to overshoot, hope for me to air brake him a little, but look how slow he is. He did a turn. He was going like 500. I don't think he's doing even that right now. And there he goes. Too slow to dodge. He could have cancer rolled maybe, but I have a lot of ammo and I am very low on fuel, so I'm actually quite maneuverable. And that's the game. A few games before that, and this is going to show how... Uh, easy it is to fly this plane when you have cover and then also how uh, not easy it becomes the moment you are outnumbered because my team pretty much crumbled in this one not the hardest shot in the world flying straight might think he's going back but when you fly a straight line i have a lot of ammo i can just hold you down and at this point i'm just gonna start looking for people shoot way too high he dodges a bit and especially F100s, you want to make sure that you handle them. You don't have to shoot in the head-on, just make sure that they don't start off on your 6. You don't want supersonics on your 6. You don't want anything on your 6 in this thing, but especially supersonics are a pain in the ass to get off you. I'm gonna fly for the deflection over here, pull straight up. He's not gonna pull with me, and if he does, he's much faster than me. So if he was to pull with me there, I could have S-rammed him. But he's paying attention, and he's flying away. And 
again, that comes to MiG-19, I don't want him on my 6, so I go straight for him. F-100 is right above me, so I want to make sure that he doesn't do the same. This dodges guns, there's no way he's going to pull that. F-100 doesn't seem to be interested in me, which is fantastic. G91 is a good target for an SRAM because they're very hard to hit, but that angle is way too steep and I'm not going to waste a missile on that. I'm going to pull up, there's a MiG-19 that's rather slow, so I might be able to get a shot here, but he's going head on and there's no way I'm getting a missile off on that. Maybe if I had to lock a bit earlier I might have been able to do it. But I'm not too sure, I'm not too, not too used to these missiles yet. I don't think I can shoot them in those kind of head-ons. And here we go, furball down below. Which is exactly what I want in this plane. Looking for the MiG-19, he's gonna fly away and the F or the A5 is gonna pull straight up. So instead, I'll just get an shot on him, only set him on fire. But if a jet fire on A5, he's not gonna survive that. Very good. And he built, how oh, fantastic. Don't see that a lot lately. Coming back into the furball, thinking that I might be able to help one or two people. F-40 dies, which is great. G-91 on the left isn't very much of a threat. The MiG-19 is getting shot at by people. But I'm coming through anyway, so I'm just going to missile both of them. He flies right into my gun, so I don't need a missile. Shoot the missile on the second guy. And he's dead as well. There we go. And this is where the fun begins. F-100 that really wants to kill me. What can I do? Not much really. I can try to outrun him. I can try to outbreak him, because I can reverse him actually. But once I reverse him, he'll just break off and fly away. So it's very annoying to fight these kind of planes. In the meantime, my team completely crumbled in about 5 seconds. Which is just fantastic. So now I'm on my own. But at the, f at the start I will have a 1v1 one one with the F100. And the F100 breaks off in time, which my bit wings. He'll have to too much separation for me to even missile him. And now the F4 comes on me as well. And this is where you will see how annoying this plane is. F4 has gun pots and he is quite a bit faster than me. So I'm thinking I could just reverse him. But no. Look at how much speed he's losing. I'm faster than him now. And when I try to pull up. I don't turn nearly well enough to energy trap him. Because he has those afterburning engines. And he will just be able to pull straight up for me. And here I make a very big mistake. Well, apart from that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i trying to turn back towards my base now. And that's not because I want to camp the AA. That's because I don't want to fly towards the enemy. I want to have this 1v1. But it's too late. The F-40 saw me. And the F-100 is coming in as well now. So at this point it's pretty much hopeless. I'm going to try to get a very quick reversal on this guy. Put my troll on 0% for a little bit. Don't advise this. I'm thinking maybe I can reverse this guy. I go below the water. So if he tries to get the shot right there. He will crash. He didn't take it. So that's a bit unfortunate. And here I think maybe I can go straight up. And stall him out. But the F4. Just look at his engines. Uh, he's a lot slower than me. And he just pulls up like that. Like it's nothing. And here I go down. And I make a very big mistake. Because I've got a crash right here. But at least the F1 only got the kill. So that's good. Would have been a bit wasted to crash right there. They didn't deserve that. Thank you all for watching me flying this absolute shit brick of a plane. I will be flying the G91 R3 and the Shenyang F5 a little bit more, but I need more time. I'm not too good with especially the F5. So stay tuned for that. I'm probably going to be dropping that next weekend. I'm not too sure yet. But I hope you have a nice Sunday or what's left of it. And I'll see you in the next one.